In this video, we take a look at the future of YouTube. From investing in weather balloons that provide internet to people in rural parts of the world, to launching YouTube filming studios in cities. And what about merging videos with augmented reality? That way, your favorite YouTubers can be your personal home assistants or personal travel guides. Or how about watching a gamer stream on YouTube and being able to jump in and join them in the game? And what will happen after the grandparents and legends of YouTube look to slow down or even retire? How will YouTube evolve? Joe Barnard was working as a wedding videographer when he saw SpaceX test land their Falcon 9 rocket. Using textbooks and YouTube tutorials, Joe taught himself coding and mechanical design. And today, he is the one on YouTube creating videos that viewers can learn from. His videos show him building advanced model rockets, ones that look to match the sci-fi tech scene with SpaceX rockets. And his rockets have come close to self-landing, too. Joe Barnard and his rocket company BPS Space is an example of the most powerful impact that YouTube has on the world. That anyone can get on and start learning for free. Whether that be learning how to build model rockets, graphic design, how to build movie props, or learn how not to do things. You even have direct access to some of the best minds of our lifetime and from the past. Looking into the future, how can Google with YouTube take this power of information and bring it to more people around the world, even to people who don't have internet? By using drones and weather balloons. Big tech companies, along with Airbus and Boeing, have been exploring how solar-powered drones that can fly for months can be used to beam internet down to places without it. Facebook looked into this but abandoned their program. Google also looked at using drones but have now moved on to using large, solar-powered weather balloons the size of a tennis court. The project is called Loon, and it is looking to create a network of balloons floating on the edge of space, giving internet access to rural areas and to people after a natural disaster. When everyone is able to access YouTube and start learning from the videos, the question then becomes, how will people understand what is being said? About 80% of YouTube's viewers come from outside of the U.S. So how can videos made in one language be understood by someone who speaks another? By using speech recognition. The same technology used in Home Assistant speakers like Siri or Google Assistant. YouTube knows what is being said in each video. Once a video has been published, they automatically translate and create captions in over 100 languages. But now there are Google Pixel Buds, which gives you instant live audio translations in your ear when you're talking to someone. So will there be a time when we will be able to hear a human-sounding voice translation of YouTube videos, saving us from having to read captions? And it can come to the point where the original voice of your favorite YouTuber can be mapped, as artificial intelligence can already clone voices. Could it then be used to create translated versions of videos using the YouTuber's voice. With Google Translate, you can use your phone's camera and point it at text in the real world, and it will automatically translate it with augmented reality. Google is investing and working on making the physical world digital, and the digital world physical. So how can this apply to YouTube videos? Using Google Lens and the Menu option, you can point your camera at a menu and it will show you which of the dishes are the best sellers and best rated, based on people's reviews using Google Maps. Will this merging of the real world and digital world work with videos made by YouTube creators, where videos come to life with the use of augmented reality? Say you buy a DIY kit. Using augmented reality, a how-to video plays out over your real world, guiding your hands step by step. Or how about a car brand or a mechanic YouTuber who creates how-to videos for specific cars? So if you have a problem with your car, you can pull up a video. And as you move around your car, the video view follows you and changes based on what you're looking at and what you need to do next. The video guides could even correct you if you have done something wrong. Google have been working on something like this already. They have created an app called DanceLike 
where you dance along with a video. It uses your phone's camera and gives you feedback on how well aligned you are with the dancer in the video. This requires your phone to scan your body movements, process the movements, and match it to the model in the video, all in real time. Google is working on turning your phone into a supercomputer. Another idea for merging the real world with YouTube videos is augmented reality entertainment guides. Kind of a choose-your-own-adventure, but with your favorite YouTuber. Say you're visiting New York City. You go to your favorite travel YouTuber on your phone. The camera opens up, and based on where you are in the city, your YouTuber starts giving you a tour. Or maybe they just tell funny stories of what they did in the location you are in. They can point you to specific restaurants and cafes. And when you walk in, just like the lens menu option we mentioned earlier, they can tell you what their favorite items are on the menu. So the next time you're visiting a new city, your favorite travel YouTuber can give you a personal tour and be your assistant. Or it could be your favorite YouTube gamer giving you a tour around their home city. One way to predict and build the future of YouTube is to look at one of the biggest, if not the biggest, genres on the platform, gaming. The most popular YouTube personality, PewDiePie, started out making gaming videos, and YouTube gets more than 200 million people a day watching gaming videos, from professional eSport matches to reviews, or videos of people commenting while playing. This huge audience means serious business when it comes to advertising money. And other tech giants are watching. Today, people can watch gamers through Facebook Gaming and Microsoft's Mixer, while Twitch, which is owned by Amazon, is the leader in live streams. So how does YouTube make sure that it is the destination for watching gaming? By going a step further and creating its own gaming system. Stadia is a cloud-based gaming system made by Google, YouTube's parent company. It allows gamers to pay a monthly subscription and play a library of games. And you don't need to download the games. Instead, you stream them to play, just like a movie on Netflix. And just like Netflix, you can play these games on any of your devices, even your phone. So gamers can be playing on Google's own gaming system, streaming, and uploading videos directly to YouTube with a ready-made audience, creating a closed system, a closed system with other features. When you're on YouTube and watching a trailer for a new video game, at the end of the video there will be a Play Now button. Clicking the button will have you playing that game in 5 seconds. On the gaming controller, you have a button for Google Assistant. Right now you are able to navigate on the platform using your voice, or ask search questions if you have any about a game and how it works. But in the future, you'll be able to ask, how do I beat this boss? And a YouTube video will pop up, showing the same location that you are playing in the game, and will guide you on how to beat it. You could be watching a streamer play a game on YouTube, and you could go to the same location in your game and see if you can beat their score. These gamers could also invite YouTube viewers to jump in and play with them, everything done live in real time. This will all create a stronger connection between YouTubers and their audiences. Google Stadia is turning the tables and focuses on the audience, which explains the name, Stadia, meaning more than one stadium. With all of this effort and development being invested into the gaming genre on YouTube, what other topics could see changes? YouTube have recently created the Slash Fashion section. This will be a page that features fashion and beauty videos picked by a team at YouTube. Videos will be from homegrown YouTubers alongside the mega names such as Gucci and Naomi Campbell's year old channel. Fashion and beauty brings in a large number of viewers, so this section can look to see other new features built for it. Right now, there is the AR Beauty Try On feature that lets viewers try on the makeup with augmented reality while they're watching a YouTuber's makeup tutorial or review video. When it comes to music, YouTube have an artist development program. Dua Lipa was one who went through the program, which gives musicians tools and education on how to connect with fans and create different kinds of content. A lot of this development and guiding of YouTubers is happening in the filming studios YouTube have been building around the world. These filming studios are called YouTube Spaces and can be found in seven cities such as London, New York, Tokyo, and Rio de Janeiro. 
YouTube Spaces are places where YouTubers can go and use the professional studio space and video and sound equipment to create their content. The Spaces also host events and workshops and have co-working areas. Google have always been a creator of creators, creating ways for people to become entrepreneurs and make money online. Google's AdSense program allowed bloggers to make money and created the blogging boom. That same AdSense program also allows people to make livings doing creative things while making videos. Google has always allowed creators to make money on their platforms. These days, YouTube is looking to develop independent YouTubers into more polished versions. At the same time, you have big names creating original series together with YouTube. From Kevin Hart's What the Fit, while the best cover ever singing competition was hosted by Ludacris, created by Ryan Seacrest's production company, and had appearances from Katy Perry, Demi Lovato, Keith Urban, and more superstar musicians. The new YouTube Originals show, The Age of AI, is hosted by Robert Downey Jr. with Will I Am as a producer. You also have big names who have come onto YouTube to create their own independent channels. You have Adam Savage, who was a host for Discovery Channel's Mythbusters, who has the YouTube channel Adam Savage's Tested. And there is DriveTube by Jeremy Clarkson, James May, and Richard Hammond. All of these big names, from the YouTube originals to DriveTube, have teams of people working on creating their videos. In 2018, T-Series, the Indian record label and film studio who have the highest number of subscribers on YouTube, uploaded more than three videos a day. Now T-Series has gone on to develop web series and films for Amazon, Netflix, and other platforms. Individual homegrown YouTubers end up having to post as much as they can, some even daily, to stand out and build an audience. But it's hard for them to make this level of work sustainable. This is why you're hearing a number of them talking about the possibility of slowing down. After 10 years of posting daily, non-stop, independent and homegrown YouTuber PewDiePie took a month off at the beginning of 2020. And when he returned, he talked about changing the way he runs his channel and looked to work on bigger projects. Another homegrown YouTuber, Linus from Linus Tech Tips, now manages a large team of writers, editors, and production crew. They create videos daily and manage a number of channels. Linus also talked about the possibility of retiring. Casey Neistat is another huge YouTuber that used to post daily videos and now has reduced the number of videos he creates, looking to focus on other areas of his life. What could end up being the new projects that these YouTube legends start working on? Could it be managing one of the major sections on YouTube, such as gaming or fashion, where they pick feature videos and help newer YouTubers create ideas and videos? Or maybe they will venture out and create their own platforms, similar to Nebula, which is a streaming platform like Netflix, but with YouTube creators, focusing on educational videos. Maybe one day there will be a business platform with all business videos, from futuristic business videos to historical ones. And when the legends of YouTube do move on, who will be the new rising YouTube stars of tomorrow? On the next episode of Venture City, we take a look at the future of gaming. Hit the subscribe and thumbs up button to not miss a video.